Um, I love the story in 1 Samuel about Hannah dedicating Samuel uh, to the temple and to the Lord. And um, a lot of times the verses on the baby dedication comes out of that. Now, I want to tell you this. Baby dedication is a little bit of a misomer. It's really not baby dedication, is it, class? What is it, really? It's parent dedication. When you do this in the, in the church, and Lord willing, there will come a day, if, God, if the Lord tarries, that you're going to have your little bambino, you're going to have your little baby in a church service, and you are going to be dedicating that baby to the Lord. Now, here's what should have happened. You should have actually dedicated the child to God alone with your spouse already. Marilee and I took Ben, Luke, and Drew shortly after each one of them were born, and we put them on our couch. We put them on our ottoman in our living room, and we knelt down and we dedicated our babies to God. Like Abraham gave uh, Isaac over to the Lord. So we gave Ben, Luke, and Drew. And I'm going to tell you what we did and dedicated them in just a moment. But we dedicated them to the Lord. Then we had a public service of the dedication of Ben, Luke, and Drew uh, to the Lord in our church. However, that was more about Marilee and Jim. Publicly identifying and becoming accountable to the church. And in a way, the church is saying, we're going to come alongside of you and help you raise and train your child. In the nursery, we're going to make sure that your children are protected. In Sunday school, we're going to teach them God's word. We're going to be the examples. It was kind of a church dedication and a parent dedication when we did it in the church. Uh, but the baby dedication technically should have been done alone already. But let's look at our notes for just a moment. I think you're going to really enjoy this. What happened when we dedicated our children to the Lord? Now, were you dedicated to the Lord? Did your mom and dad uh, have a time where they uh, gave you up to God? Um, I came not from that kind of home or background. Um, I came from a Catholic background, and I think they, you know, they christened the baby. But what in the world is that all about? Um, so I didn't have what maybe some of you had. I, I didn't have what my three sons had, where we, Marilee and I, privately dedicated our boys to God, and then publicly we kind of dedicated ourselves. So what happened when we dedicated our children to the Lord? Number one, we gave honor and worship to God by allowing Him to have our greatest possession. We, we, we dedicated them to God. So now, Lord, this is not our children, this is your child, which the fruit of the womb is his reward anyhow. We just recognize the fact that, God, our three boys are yours. They're not ours. We gave honor and worship to God. Number two, we gave permission to God to do what he wills, when he wills, where he wills, how he wills with our children. God, they're yours. We gave God permission. God, whatever you want to do with our boys, wherever you want to put them, they're yours. Number three, we released us, mom and dad, from the pressure of ownership, but gave us then the responsibility of stewardship. We don't own our kids but we need to steward our children. And boy, that just changes the whole way you look at parenting. They're not our kids. They're the Lord's that he's given to us to steward and manage, guide, direct, and train up. Number four, we have a starting point when we said they are yours. I think if baby dedication is a cool thing. You ought to have a date. This is the date, this is the time. We have a starting point when the children were given over to God. And number five, it put us in a position of faith in God and under his authority to do it his way. Let me give you an incredible illustration. I'd write this down. Exodus, Jochebed takes Moses and puts Moses in that little ark 
that little bulrush boat and sends little Moses down the Nile River. You know what? It put her in a position of faith. And isn't that the most incredible story? Because by the end of the day, she's got Moses back in her arms and she's getting paid for taking care of her child. That was all a step of faith. And if you don't believe that, look at Luke chap or excuse me, look at Hebrews chapter 11 because in Hebrews chapter 11 that is exactly why Jochebed and Moses' parents are in the hall of faith is because they trusted God for their child and they were willing by faith they dedicated their child and put to God and put that child in a little boat, a little ark, and push it down the Nile River. And by the end of the day, she's got Moses in her hands and she's getting paid for taking care of her own child. I just want you to know that is an incredible dedication. So that's what we did. Now, look at the next part of the lecture. What didn't happen? When we dedicated our children to the Lord. Okay, so okay, so we know what did happen, what didn't happen, all right? These are just as equally as important as the other ones. Number one, excluded our children from all trouble and failure. Okay, God, we're dedicating our children to you now, and now we know that there won't they won't ever have any more problems in their life. No. We that didn't happen when we dedicated our children to the Lord, that they would be delivered, excluded from all trouble and failure. Number two, it didn't stop Satan from wanting, getting, and sifting our children. Getting and sifting our children. Hey, you know what? When we dedicated our children to the Lord, that didn't Satan go, well, I don't have any chance for them now. It actually put a target on them. Now Satan wanted to get our children because we dedicated them unto God. They were holy things now that were dedicated to the Lord. Now Satan's going, it's your kids that I want. It's your kids I want. Hey, look at, hey God, look at the children that, uh, that they dedicated to you. Look, look, look at them now. No, let me tell you something. It didn't stop Satan from going after our kids. It actually probably put a target on our kids. Number three, it did not secure their place in heaven. Just because we dedicated our children to the Lord did not mean that they have a safe place now in heaven and that they're, they're going to be saved. We believe by faith that our children would, but they've got to make that own decision themselves. Every person's got to receive Christ. And just because we dedicated our children to the Lord doesn't mean that we secured their place in heaven. They still have a free will, and they're going to have to choose later on. We're just going to provide an environment. We're going to put an atmosphere in our home that would be conducive to wanting to, to trust Christ as their Savior. Number four, I'll tell you what did not happen. Caused their wills to be surrendered to His. We just surrendered the children but they have to surrender their wills. And by surrendering and dedicating our children to God did not surrender their wills to the Lord. Number five, take away the consequences of their sins. That did not happen when we dedicated our children to the Lord. You know what? You get to choose your sin, children, but you don't get to choose your consequences. And just because you were dedicated to the Lord doesn't mean you're not going to have consequences to your sins. You still can have that. I'll tell you a great illustration of that guy named Samson. Samson was dedicated to the Lord, but that did not absolve him from the consequences of his own sins. You know what? Sin binds, sin blinds, and sin grinds. Samson experienced all three consequences to his sins. And even though his parents, Manoah and his wife, dedicated Samson to the Lord, didn't mean Samson wasn't going to have consequences to his own sins. And number six, listen to this one. When we dedicated our children to the Lord, it didn't take away the desire to raise them by our feelings and not by the word. You go, Brother Shell, I don't understand what in the word you just said. Listen to me. Just because we dedicated our children to the Lord, that doesn't mean that we haven't had a desire to do it our way after we dedicated them, okay? We gave our children to God. We are no longer their owners. We're the stewards. 
But that didn't mean that we didn't stop wanting to do it our way. Just because, now we had a starting point. Hey, we, matter of fact, we had to remind each other. Hey, honey, they're not our kids. They're the Lord's. We're going to have to trust the Lord on this. We still had a desire to do it our way and to train them up the way we wanted to, and we, but we dedicated them to being trained by, train up a child in the way that he should go by the Word of God. Now, there's one other little thing on this lecture. If you look, turn the page over, you'll see a baby dedication prayer. Every year, I would write a new prayer for the families that were dedicating their children to the Lord. And let me just read it to you as we close our class today. Um, this was one of the ones that, we, that, that, I, um, that I wrote. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for blessing our church this year with many newborns. We recognize that the fruit of the womb is your reward. You have given these parents the great privilege and responsibility of being the proper examples and protection for their children's lives. We believe that each parent has been selected for each child by your wisdom, your providence, and your love. We also believe that you have chosen the right child for each home. Father, we ask first of all that these parents will have a right relationship with each other. Following the vows that they made on their wedding day, we pray that their homes would be free from worldly influences that would have the ch child's heart turned from you. We pray that forgiveness and good communication would abound in their homes. May these parents live what they would want for their children. Then, for these little ones, we ask that at an early age, while their hearts are tender, that they would recognize their sinfulness and receive Christ as their Savior by faith. May each one be properly instructed in salvation and respond by faith. We would also ask you tonight, we usually did our baby dedications on Mother's Day night, we would also ask you tonight if you would see fit to take every one of these children and put them in full-time Christian service for you. Our prayer would be that many would be missionaries, Christian school teachers, pastors, evangelists, and faithful Christian servants. May we encourage and promote with these children as a, ch as a church and parents for this next generation to live for you. Father, at this time, we dedicate them to you for your glory. And I just want you to know, in our churches, I used to have everyone hold hands. I used to have everyone stand because I felt this was our church coming together to pray for these little ones that we would help guide and direct these moms and dads. It was parent dedication. And every year I would write a new prayer um, for those families that were being dedicated and their children to the Lord. And I want to encourage you to do it. And many of you will be pastors and you'll have that opportunity. I think, I think baby dedication was a really cool service and a very important one.